What is going on everybody? Nazdarachi coming at you today for another Dragon Ball Legends video. Today we're going to be jumping into some in-depth game mechanics. The four different ways of comboing or extending combos. Basically how to battle in this game. Nothing is going to be character specific or really card specific. I'm certain ones of the techniques will kind of be card specific, but nothing is going to be character specific. These are just the general ways that you combo in the game or that you will want to extend your combos once again. There are four of them, of course. There is the default way of just chaining cards together. There is the classic sidestep. There is the tackle sidestep. And there is, of course, Charge Step. Those are going to be your four main or most meta-recognized ways of playing the game. So there might be some sub-tactics, but those are the four main ones that we're going to be covering today. We don't want the video to be too, too long or too, too complex or confusing, even though I'm pretty sure that a fair amount of the more experienced players will already be pretty familiar with all this information. There may still be something that you don't know yet. So you might still learn something today, but of course, I feel like this video will just kind of just be generally healthy for the community in general, try to get this information out, because I do see a lot of people on social media arguing back and forth between which techniques are better and are they exploit sometimes or not and stuff like that. And my ultimate answer for all of that type of conversation is each technique is got its pros and cons and each one has different times which they're going to be beneficial to use and when they're not going to be your optimal choice these are the tools the developers have provided for us and while they're still in the process of tweaking things here and there these ones are all pretty well established at this point in the game now almost two years in so they are fairly reliable just a good kind of touch-up course for some of these techniques here so before I jump into the visual references and go into each one specifically, I did want to give a huge shout out to Slanak or Rusmir, of course. He is a huge friend of mine and as well a huge asset to the Dragon Ball Legends community. Even though he doesn't always get along with everybody, he does provide some great information. He did provide the video tooltips we're going to be using today as well as plenty of back-end information to help complement them. So he's a great help to me. Again, I just wanted to give him a huge shout out. So let us hop into the visual references here and start breaking them down. We're actually going to start with the classic sidestep and this is just gonna kind of play in the background while I cover some of the information about it. We may be trying to explain to you how to do it as well, but none of these techniques are too complicated to pull off. They just require various swipe and long press inputs and timing is honestly your biggest challenge. You gotta get the timing and even once you get the timing, you then have to master the timing in various matches of different connection qualities. So be times when you're trying to do these techniques and it's super laggy, you have to know when you can and can't still pull them off and how to delay things accordingly. So it is quite challenging in that sense, but learning the basics isn't too challenging. So let's hop into the first example here. We're going to start with the classic sidestep. There are of course times when you are definitely going to want to use this technique and of course others where it's not going to be as useful. As you can see in the example here, when the fight started, the cell had to vanish out of the way, burn his vanish meter. So using this technique here is going to recover some of that vanish meter in between each arch card usage. As well, you can't see it, but if his two partners had been swapped out, their timers would be reducing, and he is getting some key back between each card. Now, this combos especially well with characters that have boosted card draw speed because you would as well be getting more cards in your hand, at least one or two generally, to lengthen your combos. So that's why it's considered a combo extension technique. And it also ex extends the time that your combo takes which of course does have its advantages. Now some of the disadvantages of using this are you are getting more action inputs. That's something that I actually feel like we should explain here before we get too much further into this series of explanations. The way that combo damage scaling works in Dragon Ball Legends is each action you take is going to decrease the overall damage that the final combo output is going to be. You're doing more actions, the combo damage is scaling up. This counts not only for using arts cards, but it also counts for using movement and inputs of any kind in between arts card usage. So the longer, the more inputs your combo takes, the less the overall damage is going to be. 
So because you are dashing forward and then dashing sideways using this sidestep technique, it is going to lower the overall damage that you are doing to the opponent by usually around like, I don't know, 300,000 to half a million if you were respectively using the same amount of cards in a chain combo. We're actually going to get to that a little bit later on in the video, but that is one of the downsides of using this technique, along with the fact that your enemy is also recovering their swap timers and some of their key between these beatdowns as well. So chaining the cards does have its more aggressive reasons for being used. Meanwhile, this technique, of course, is getting you the swap timer back, getting you that vanish gauge recovery, getting you some of your key back, and allowing you to draw more cards, especially if you have a character with boosted card draw speed. So this is one of the easiest, the most basic, and main primary ways of extending your combos. It can be done using red cards or yellow cards indiscriminately. It doesn't really matter in this sense. It's not card specific whatsoever. So that's about all we need to say about the classic sidestep. There may be a couple examples where we kind of loop back around to it when we talk about the other techniques. So let's jump into the second example here, the correct way to do charge step. Now this is one that has been a little bit harder for some of the members of the community to grasp. It is a little bit more challenging, more specific, and more timing demanding of a technique. But there is, as well, limitations to when it is useful and under what conditions. Now, you really can only use this technique, as you're seeing, effectively between Blast Arts cards that are being done at mid-range. If you try to use this technique with red cards, which we'll actually show with an example here in a second, you just don't have enough time. The, the, the yellow card animation can be canceled out of quicker than the red card animation, which means that the enemy still has more hit stun left on their hit stun timer, allowing you to maximize the amount of key back you get when charging. When you're using red cards, because you can't cancel out of the animation as quickly, you will not have as much hit stun left to deal with, and it's just really not a beneficial technique. You should just consider using card chaining, or the traditional sidestep, or the tackle sidestep, between red cards. This is one instance where the technique is pretty much card dependent, but you can see that in the video here. He's kind of waiting until after the red card is done, then between the yellows, he's maximizing this technique to get the most key back possible. This also still maintains your card draw speed bonuses, as well as getting plenty of key back and swap time reduction but you will not recover any vanish meter whatsoever, as you can see while using this technique. So that is one of the main drawbacks of using the charge step. The way that, I didn't really explain the side step, it's very simple though, just you swipe forward and then swipe sideways after the technique is done to do your classic side step. Charge step is a little bit more difficult, requiring you to, you can kind of see his button pushes on the screen, but you're going to want to cancel your blue yellow card, bleh, sorry animation, cancel the yellow card animation by swiping forward of course, and then immediately long pressing on the screen and then letting up going into another arts card. This one is a little bit more tricky, but you know, if you have friends that are willing to do casual matches with you, I suggest practicing your timing in that situation or even, you know, low level ranked battles. Those people aren't too difficult or too crazy skilled at the game. So plenty of opportunity to practice but again, this one is probably one of the most challenging to get the timing right, especially under circumstances where the connection is not the greatest in the matches. You may consider just not using charge step altogether if you are in an extremely laggy match because it makes it very much more difficult to get your timing windows nailed properly. So that is something that also should be mentioned. I think that's about it for charge step until we do the damage comparisons. So we'll move on to the next one, which is the side tackle step here. Starting this one up, this one is fairly straightforward, but only became a staple technique, of course, when Battle System 2.1 introduced this, you know, buffed tackle system. I mean, you could use it before then when tackles were originally introduced, but it really has only seen more light kind of recently because it's a technique that is great for building timers back, great for building meters back, and great for wasting time. This is the technique that you'll consider using if you have either been locked in for like five to 10 seconds, or if you have a situation where you just really want to drag things out. It works great with card draw speed, but you're doing the most amount of inputs when you do this combo. So it will suffer from the most amount of damage descaling 
because of the added inputs, of course, because you're dashing sideways, you're then doing a tackle input, and then doing another card input. You're just really racking up those, really those de detrimental detractors that scale down the damage of your combo. But, again, it's very similar to the classic sidestep. It's the main benefit of this is time wasting. You'll get the maximum amount of recovery on your swap timers, or you'll bait out the duration of most lock-ins in the entire game if you have you know, enough cards in your hand and whatnot. You can also use this with yellow cards as well. The example shows red specifically, but it does work with yellows. We have a final video towards the end where we'll show all of the techniques kind of tied up in a knot, a nice little bow, and presented just kind of in one little showcase. So, again, there's not too much else to say about the side tackle step. It's not very difficult to do. You just input the tackle maneuver by tapping on the screen once you've hit mid-range as you're dashing forward. Of course, coming out of your red cards, you as well will swipe sideways, not forwards, so you stay at that far range row. If you swipe forwards, you'll end up, you know, flying all the way up to the enemy and doing a punch tap combo instead. So you'll want to, again, cancel out of the red cards with the sideways input, not the forward dash input. And about that, it's just good for resetting the, the game to neutral because it wastes just so much dang time. But there is one thing you have to note, again, I've mentioned this before, that while your timers are decreasing, so are your enemies. So it will help them set up some potential favorable swaps because you'll be giving them that time back as well. That's really all there is to say about the side tackled step. So the last ones we can jump into now are going to be your damage comparisons between just chaining cards and using sidestep, and then the mix-ups where everything is all tied together. So earlier in the video, I believe I had mentioned that, well, of course I mentioned how the damage scaling works, and the more inputs you do, of course, the less damage your combo is overall going to do, and how sidestep is good for wasting time. But that also brings into the benefits of why would you want to chain cards? Well, say for example, an enemy has a swap coming up that you know about within about the next five timer counts or so, or say you're using a character like Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, who's got a five second lock when he swaps in, or Fat Boo for that matter. When you're in those type of situations, you generally want to maximize the amount of damage you can do as quickly as you can possibly do it. Or if you're in a situation where you have a guaranteed kill on a character and you know you can kill them within like two to three arts cards and you don't want to waste that extra time because that might be favorable for the enemy, again, that time helps them out as well. So chaining cards actually does have valuable place in the meta, in the game, for combat usage. When you just chain directly into the combo, Again, you're wasting the least amount of time and you'll get the most amount of damage. There are plenty of situations, again, botched swaps or when the enemy's locked in or when you just want to get as much damage done as possible and it can just finish a fight. Those are three off the top of my head. I'm sure there's other situations as well. But again, for just getting out as much raw damage as possible, this chaining cards with nothing in between is your best bet. Now, there are some things you still have to know about this. Because you are just chaining the cards back to back, it's very predictable for the enemy to be able to time in advantageous cover exchanges. So if they have Bojack, they can see anything coming, just throw him in front of it. But if they have a more specific character like Bardock, who, bought, who cover changes in front of Blasts, or like the LF Frieza, who will cover change in front of Strikes, then they'll be able to see this coming because you're just rapidly firing off your attacks from the back row. So it is very predictable in that sense. When you you know, do the sidestep and dash forwards, get right in their face, it's much harder, there's much less time for them to be able to predict what you're about to do. So that can botch some of their movements and lead to mistakes being made, which can help you out. But when you just need the fast, quick, raw damage, that is when you'll want to just chain cards. Or example, there's, you know, it finishes off the Dragon Balls you need and then you're going to Rising Rush. You want to Rising Rush that specific character. You know, there are tons of situations where chaining cards is useful. Now, when we talk about damage comparison, there are no critical hits. I know the volume is turned down a little bit here, but none of these three blast cards are critical hits. You can see it's going to do the 21 hit combo and it's going to do 3.3 million damage. Again, no criticals. Let's keep that in mind and bring up the sidestep combo right quick for damage comparison's sake. So we'll pop over to this one here. And let's see, that's the one we were just watching. 
So, let's do the sidestep comparison and go, not G-Force experience. So, he's sidestepping in between, which is adding those two additional inputs. Same 21 hit combo, no crits, only 2.9 million damage. So pretty much 400,000 additional damage just from chaining the cards. That's a visual representation of that on paper for you there. Again, even though you do more damage, there are the pros and cons to both techniques, which we've just been talking about for the majority of this video. The last little one that we want to bring up here and showcase is just a mix up of everything all in one. What is it gonna look like when you're using all of the, these techniques in succession in a fight successfully? So we start off with him doing just some regular side steps there into the charge step between the blast cards into him wasting some time doing the tackle step there and showing off tackle step working with yellow card as well. So you can see during the course of the fight, depending on the situation, you can use a lot of fluidity to alter your techniques and to do what you think is best for the situation that you happen to be stuck in in that moment. I did want to cover all these, just show that off, because I know that there is in this community a big debate between when you should use what, what is successful for doing what, and is it an exploit or not sometimes, there's some people that seem to think that's the case as well. But again, these are the tools the developers have provided us at this point in the game. They're not considered exploits cheats, they're just how the game works, and it is very good for players to know all of these different mechanics so not only can you fight against them and know what you're dealing with but so that you can use them to be advantageous to you in different situations when you may need them again i wanted to give a huge shout out to rusmir for all of the helpful video tools and the pointers to go along with them from his perspective i definitely added in plenty of my own flavor and spice there as well but i hope that you guys found this information useful also i know that plenty of people again might already know this if you're in the more advanced or elite section of the pvp player base but for the general audiences i felt like this would be helpful information that could kind of maybe help some people step their game up or at least learn different techniques or be able to recognize what they're seeing if they're having trouble and struggling a lot in PvP, what, what people are using against them. Remember, you have to know your enemy, know their techniques, and that's the art of war, right? So if you enjoy the video, consider leaving a thumbs up on it. Hopefully you found it entertaining or helpful in some way, and I appreciate it because it helps spread the video out so more people can check it out. If you're new around here, consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell so I can see you again on future uploads. There'll definitely be plenty of them. And leave a comment down below. What are your favorite battle techniques? How do you play the game? What strategies do you use? Are you already aware of all these? Did you learn something today? Let me know what's on your mind. You know, this game is kind of like a hybrid card game and live action PVP game leaning more heavily to the live action PVP. So I, I just find it's very interesting the different mechanics they've come up with for how to input controls onto a phone game that's built this way. It's kind of like mobile Xenoverse almost, but you know, a little bit more narrow in scope. Either way, I'd like to know your thoughts and what you'd like to see added in terms of combat or what you don't like about combat, all that down below. And until next time, We'll be seeing you real soon. Peace out and have a great day.